G'day guys, it's Mark here from North Oz, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about five reasons why I don't have a snorkel on my new four-wheel drive. Uh, I've got my 2021 Land Cruiser Prado here, and uh, this is kind of the second video that I've made where we're talking about pieces of equipment and accessories that you don't necessarily need to be able to travel around, and we'll also be talking about uh, when you actually will need a snorkel, uh, what situation you will actually need to have one. So let's get straight into today's video. So for those of you who have been following the channel for a little while, you'll know that I had my old Navara and that had a snorkel, had all the bull bar, all the equipment, everything that you could basically throw at a truck it had on it. But I'm taking a slightly different approach with this vehicle. So obviously this doesn't have a snorkel, so that is going to be my point of comparison, my old Navara with a snorkel, and obviously my new Prado without a snorkel. Very quickly, before we get into today's video, I just wanted to make you aware of the North Oz fundraiser page that is through the Black Dog Institute, and they raise uh, awareness and they raise funds to research mental health. And uh, it's something that's you know, a really big issue uh, in, in, in Australia and around the world. And it's something that um, I hold very close to my heart and it's something that I would uh, encourage you guys, if you have any money to donate to, I've got a link in the description, but if you don't have any money to donate towards it, it's fine. If you could just let the ads run on these videos and at the end of the month, I'm gonna donate all the money that we make from all of our videos and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in our fundraiser. So I'll make sure I let you guys know how much that is. I'll make a little video at the end of the month about it. But just really quickly, you know, one of the things that brought this to my attention was seeing the statistic of 15 to 44 year olds, the highest cause and leading cause of death is in fact suicide. So a uh, very serious issue. And uh, you know, another uh, one more statistic that just stood out to me was that, you know, the suicide death toll is actually twice that of the road death toll, which is, you know, again, just something that isn't really talked about. So if you are someone who is going through um, some issues with mental health and, you know, negative thoughts, things like that, please reach out to the Black Dog Institute. I put a link in the description for you. They have a whole pile of resources there and people that you can contact in a bunch of different ways. So please do not suffer in silence. Make sure that you are accessing those resources because it's very important to keep your mental health in check. So I'm going through today's list in no particular order. So we'll start off with number one, and it is to do with aesthetics. So those of you who have watched a channel know I'm into my photography and you know forms a big part of the channel because it's the thumbnails and I like to overlay pictures while I'm talking as well in these sort of more educational videos. So for me, having that big piece of plastic sticking out of the side of the fender, you know, chopping up your fender and you know basically ruining the side there and having that snorkel going all the way up to the top sticking out is not a good look and um, obviously it doesn't make the, the truck photograph very well. Uh, so for me, just number one reason is it doesn't look very pretty. So let's move on to the second reason. So reason two why I don't have a snorkel on my Prado is higher doesn't always mean better. So having the intake taken from here or the air taken from here to here, there isn't really much of a difference when you're actually out there on the road, in my opinion. So I've driven behind uh, you know, convoys, I've driven behind trucks, I've driven behind whatever, in a variety of situations with dust. And I can tell you that there is absolutely no difference between, from my observations, from taking air from here to here. It's exactly the same. If there's a lot of dust, there's a lot of dust. And the difference is probably gonna be very small. In terms of the uh, snorkel companies uh, saying that the air is cooler and whatever, um, again, the difference between uh, cool air, I guess, and the difference between temperature of air between say my belly button and the top of my head, I can't feel the difference. So again, it's gonna be very, very small differences. So for me, uh, the second reason why I don't have one is because the stock intake uh, in my opinion, does everything I need it to do. So um, I'm not too concerned about, you know, the amount of dust and all that stuff uh, getting into the intake. Uh, so for me, I guess reason number two is that I just don't really buy into, uh, you know, a lot of what the snorkel companies are saying in terms of, you know, how much better it is for the vehicle compared to the stock intake. Reason number three, and potentially the biggest reason why I do not run a snorkel at the moment, is because no snorkel company from the research that I did can guarantee that there will be no water ingress through the snorkel assembly. And that to me is a very, very big problem. The reason why that's a big problem is because if you have a new car that is under a new car warranty, you've used a third party uh, installer or used a third party accessory, it's not Toyota, and slaps it on here, being a whatever snorkel, whatever brand snorkel, you name it, 
and water has gotten into the engine from either a water crossing or even just driving around in heavy rain, which I know has been a problem for some of the people I follow on Instagram where they've had snorkels and it's, where they've had a heavy rain and their car is shut down. And that, that's a really big problem because this will not be covered and that will not be covered under your new car warranty because that is a fault of a external installer or it's your fault. So they'll say, cough up the money, give me the 20 grand so we can put a new engine in here or at least fix up the engine, however they do it. I'm not a mechanic, so I don't know. But I, what I do know is that it will cost a whole pile of money. Now, I really hope I'm wrong here, guys. And please, if you have any information about this, please let me know in the comment section and, and tell me uh, if there is a company out there that guarantees zero water ingress into the snorkel assembly. Reason number four follows on from reason number three and it is to do with warranty. Now, of course, if uh, water, dust, whatever gets into the air intake and affects your engine or affects how the vehicle is running in any way, shape or form, you have to understand that there is an element of risk involved just like installing anything else on the vehicle. Uh, but if something goes wrong because you've installed uh, an air intake, then uh, you know you don't really have a leg to stand on there because that is going to be your own fault uh, for taking away the original design of the Toyota um, manufacturer and the Toyota engineers. So just keep that in the back of your mind as well. That might sound all well and good, cutting holes in the fender and doing all this stuff and hooking up, you know, giving yourself uh, some extra, um, I guess, clearance and water crossings and that or whatever. But you also have to understand, and this is a big thing that, you know, you have to understand the risk that you are running in terms of making yourself open to uh, you know, more costs and, and open to more risk of damaging your vehicle. It's just one of those things you have to weigh up. So for reason number five, I'm gonna give you a little bit of background now. I've done some modification on my vehicles in the past, mostly like sedans and hatchbacks and that, and changing the uh, air systems on them uh, is a very finicky situation. Uh, it requires a, a lot of thought and making sure that we're getting uh, components from very high-end companies and making sure that you know we're not going to uh, basically ruin the, the sensors and, and mess around with the sensors without a tune, things like that. So that's a little bit of a background. And it just seems like to me, and this is again, all my opinion, just seems like to me that we're so flippant with our four wheel drives and we just say, oh no, let's just whack a big old stainless steel pipe on the side, funnel that into an air box and we're good to go. And that costs the same as a standard, very small um, high performance um, air intake for a hatchback. Now that's just something that I've noticed and it's, it's a little bit of a worry because I am very concerned that these vehicles, we know that the new vehicles are touchy. I mean, we know that the direct injection diesels, uh, you know, uh, they, if they get a little bit of water or contaminants or whatever it is in them, we know that it can cause them quite a lot of damage. Um, so I'm just being extra careful and trying to protect this vehicle, trying to protect my depreciating asset, um, you know, trying to protect my investment, I guess. And I guess I just want you guys to do that as well. So when I look at how cheap snorkels are, and I think about how expensive it is to just put a very basic air intake on you know, my performance vehicles, I wonder a little bit about how much research and the quality of these snorkels and uh, what they are and are they gonna hurt the engine. So that's just one of those things that I just thought about myself and just thought, wow, the prices of you know, these snorkels are so cheap that they're actually cheaper than what I can get for my WRX, which is just a standard air intake. In the last video I made, which is very similar to this, where we're talking about bull bars, if you haven't seen that, go and check that out. We had some good discussions in the comments section there, and I hope we can do the same thing here too. And I had a lot of people, you know, say, oh, it's for city folk and, you know, all these people modifying their vehicles, they don't even go out into the bush. You don't know what it's like out in the bush. And it's like, well, yeah, I mean, 90% of the population live around, you know, built up areas. So, I mean, it's a fair comment that those people are making. But my ideas and the, these conversations that we're having is that I'm trying to encourage people to, I'm not discouraging people from getting a snorkel and, and bull bars and kitting out their vehicles. It's your money, do what you want. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people, especially people that are new to the hobby, like I was a couple of years ago, I feel like that there's a lot of pressure on us to try to you know, have our cars all fitted out and you can't go out bush and you can't do this unless you have this equipment. So from that, 
I want to talk a little bit now about when do you actually need a snorkel and, and is one right for you? So a snorkel, if it is installed correctly and if you have the correct paperwork to say that basically it will do its job and it won't allow water ingress into the engine, if that is all good and you're happy with that and I would be happy with that if I had that information on me, then when would I actually need a snorkel? So for me, I wouldn't get a snorkel just to have cleaner, higher up air. That's, I wouldn't do that. When I would actually get a snorkel would be if I was crossing ri rivers that were of a higher weighting depth uh, than what the vehicle manufacturer recommends. And for the Prado, I'll put up on the screen what the um, weighting depth is of this vehicle. And so if we're doing like tracks like, you know, uh, the Cape York tracks, the Tele tracks and all that, where we're going over deep ri river crossings, well, of course you need to have a snorkel. But I tell you what, there are some guys over in America that are doing some pretty crazy things, um, you know, where they don't have snorkels and they're using, um, uh, I think they call wake, um, wake blankets and things like that. Uh, so I've seen it happen. I've seen it work where people have gotten away with not using snorkels. I wouldn't recommend it. But um, in terms of when would you need to use a snorkel, I would just say, are you going to cross a river? Uh, or a creek or whatever it is, are you gonna cross water? That's gonna be higher than the weighting depth of your vehicle. For me, no, I'm not taking this car down the tally track because um, it's not the vehicle for it. Uh, I haven't built it up that way. I built it up as a touring vehicle where yes, I can do very complex tracks on it, which I have done. I'll leave links to it up above there that you can check out. But I'm not too interested in doing the whole big, you know, going over really big, you know, rivers and all that sort of stuff. So for me, in my personal situation, no, I won't be getting a snorkel, but for you, that may be something that you might want to consider is that, yes, I will be crossing rivers. I will be doing, um, you know, uh, big river crossings and big creek crossings where I need that higher air intake height. And try not to think too much and get out of that thinking of, but what if? But what if, you know, it's like, what if I'm towing my caravan and I come across a really big creek or river I need to cross? Try not to think of it that way because a lot of the time, if you're on in a main area or, you know, you're on a, in a common area where people travel all the time, there's normally ways around places. And that's something that I guess as a community, we need to try to get out of our heads of the, oh, I'm going to put a snorkel on just in case. I want to put a bull bar on just in case. I'm going to get a three and a half inch lift just in case. You know, so try to be, and I'm not telling you how to spend your money, but in my opinion, for my situation, I try to save as much money as I can on things that I don't need, such as snorkels, bull bars, because I'm saving that money to travel. And that's just the way I see it. I bought this vehicle to travel with, um, I spent the money on it, and I really don't wanna spend any more than I have to. So that's kind of my little rant about um, whether or not you would need a snorkel. And in terms of which snorkel you should get, let's have a quick discussion about that now and what I would be looking for in a snorkel. So with the current situation of the way the snorkel companies are set up and from the research I've done, listen, I would be, I would go two ways. I would either go with Toyota and ask them what their spec sheets are on their snorkel and if they can guarantee that it, you know, won't um, affect the warranty of the vehicle. If you do, you know, cross a river crossing and then there's water ingress into the engine and it destroys it, you can always hold Toyota accountable if it's their product, such as the bull bars, the snorkels, whatever else. So using Toyota and Toyota parts is a really good place to start. Now, the second way I would probably go if um, I wasn't gonna go with Toyota is I would make sure that I would go with a very uh, reputable um, fabrication company where they would design a snorkel for me specific for my vehicle and it would have a proper air intake in there such as one like for a performance vehicle and it would be enclosed in a fully sealed uh, air box, uh, very similar to a lot of the high dollar builds. But again, for that to happen, it's going to cost you a lot of money. But it just depends on how much you, how much you want to put a price on keeping the vehicle safe and you know not spending any more money than you need to. So if it was me, the easy decision would be for sure just go with the Toyota Snorkel. And if they have information on it saying that you can go above the waiting depth 
and it doesn't affect the warranty, then I would be doing that. But otherwise, I'd be having a very good and uh, very long conversation with a fabrication company to see if they could sort out something and provide, I guess, that reassurance that it will not affect uh, the warranty of the vehicle by allowing water into the engine. This video ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but it's a very important topic. You know, um, snorkels and bull bars and all these big accessories, people and YouTubers and companies and Instagrammers and all these big builds, no one talks about this stuff. You know, no one talks about the fact that, do we even need a bull bar? Do we even need a snorkel? So that's what I'm trying to do here, guys. I'm just trying to get you to think whether or not you actually need the accessories that are available on the market. And if you do actually need it, um, you know, what's obviously, just, I, I guess just keeping, keeping those risks in the back of your mind is all I'm trying to do. So uh, I hope this video helped you out a little bit. And if it did, please um, leave a like and subscribe. That always helps but I really want you guys to have a discussion with me in the comments section. Tell me what you think. We've had some good chats on the community polls as well. So keep that up as well. And yeah, and it's, um, yeah, it's going really well, guys. I'm really appreciating the back and forwards on the, in the comment section as well. It's been, um, yeah, it's been a good time. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you very shortly in the next video. See you there.